Welcome to my channel, Level Headed with Levi T. Please hit the subscribe button, the like button, and set the bell notification to all. Please also share this. Let's get into it. Don't wait up. I've been working hard every day, living dreams for a pay stub. Yeah, straight up. Five years later, like I said, I went naked on my way up. It's all up. Coming from the nation, made a foundation, true stuff, yeah, too tough. We ain't giving up on our dreams, everything is ahead of us. Stay true to your path, it's not where you start, it's all where you're at. It's where you end up when your back's to the mat. Do you cripple the flat or get up off your back? Deliver these facts to see them react. The stadium's packed, they y'all gonna snap. The motivated attract, the isolated attack, the frustrated hit back. Yeah, we move fast. I wanna change everything. there for a second all right we're gonna go over some more illusion stuff here it's gonna be his birthday tomorrow uh he's still not home this poor little guy um we're gonna get into some stuff that some uh, locals sent me and uh another researcher of mine has sent me hello welcome in alicia uh I have, uh, some locals have been helping me, but also uh, I have another researcher that's been helping me. Um, hold on here one second. I just need to get everything situated here. I was searching and digging for a mouse battery for like 15 minutes before the live. Uh, so it caught me off guard for a second here. Hold on here. All right, here's what we're going to do, uh, Sky Z. Thank you for talking about this case. Uh, Sky Z, welcome in. First time I've seen you here. Maybe you've been here watching on the uh, uh, on the replays, but uh, I try to give everybody enough chance here today um, to all come in. Let's see here. I'm going to I'm going to share my screen. Hold on here. What did they do to I'll present. Uh, hmm. They switched the share screen button to present. All right. Uh, I don't normally do this, but we're going to do this today. We're going to call, uh, not that Greenway Foundation. We're going to call this Greenway Foundation. I try calling them. Uh, Reason being is, is here's their number down here. We're going to call them while we're on live. 
so you guys can hear uh, what what happens when you call them. And it also figured out another in, interesting thing. So 509-453-8280. Watch, they'll answer because I'm live. Can you hear that? Thank you for calling the Yakima Greenway. To check on picnic shelter availability, please go to yakimagreenway.org. Go to our parks, then park info, scroll to the bottom, and check the reservation park calendar for availability. For community service, please show up at the maintenance shop at Sarge Hubbard Park, located at 205 South 18th Street at 7 a.m. or noon, seven days a week, April through October, and Monday through Friday from November through March. For any other questions, please leave your name and number after the tone, and we will return call as soon as possible. Thank you. Have a great day. So, so you have a foundation that's running a park, but you can't even get a hold of them. And uh, Kelly Con uh, uh if you're listening to this, uh, you should really um, figure out how you can have somebody answer the phone. You want people to leave messages, but uh, also have volunteers that are working there, people doing community service working there. Uh, we got some questions to uh, ask you, and. Uh, Um, let's see here. A lot of employers. Hey, Duchess. I hope you uh, got your internet back. Uh, here we go. We got some Yakima County, uh, Ex officio directors, so executive board, board of directors. Uh, this is interesting to me. So, I guess, yeah, you come to this website to donate. Um, let's check out the part here, real quick. I wanted to call them just so that you guys understood why I was calling them. The thing is, is I want to know if those cameras work. Yeah, Yakima Greenway is the one that's in charge of those cameras. But uh, overall, it's the city's property. So those would have been approved by the city to be put up there. Uh, so here's their partners, which they would call Better Together. Roy Farms. Academy Mortgage Corporation, Northwest Cherries, uh, Leonard Ricky Investment Advisors, Lee Schwab Tires, Yakima Federal, which is a bank, uh, GISA Federal, uh, not until Thursday, mobile data is iffy. I won't be in chat, but I, I'll be listening. Yes, no problem, Dutchie. Uh, Banner Bank. Uh, GSL, which is GS Long, uh, HLA Engineering, Grand Columbia Council, Boy Scouts of America, Bora, Bora Agriculture, uh, Algeria Company, Pediatric Dentistry, Trout Unlimited, U.S. Bank, uh, Fireman uh, Pollen, uh, Conover Cherry Farm, uh, Conover Insurance Cherry Farms, Kiwanis Club of Yakima, Washington, Family Fund, Burger King, uh, Moza Adams, uh, Ray's Market, Yakima's Food Store, Rotary Sunrise Club, Heritage Bank, Pacific Power, uh, Grizz, I think that's Grizzly Archery. Um, the reason why I bring all these up, oh, here, let's, we'll, we'll sign up uh, later on this one. Uh, hi, Karen. Welcome in. Anybody else I missed? Welcome in. I know there's a lot of people here listening while they work. Um, I'll sign up for this here in a second.
the reason why that was important is because you have all these sponsors. And you don't want to improve your security system because you don't know how you'll maintain it. But you want to upgrade the lights. Is that because the lights are paid for by the city? Uh, hold on here. I got some uh, emails that I want to take a look at real quick. I have. I'm just waiting for this to download. Hi, Daisy Dad. Hello, Shelly G. Uh, it's almost done downloading. Terrence Heights Conservation Area. Um, there we go. Terrence Heights Conservation Area, Boise Cascade property, open space area with river access, parks and ponds and fishing, Sunrise Rotary Park, McGuire Community Playground, uh, Barkville Reclamation, Children's Playground, uh, Picnic and Rest Area, Multi-Use Pathway, Yakima Greenway Pathway is a multi-use pathway. Um, McGuire Playground has created parking and access problems. Need to seek additional parking and a way to handle pathway congestion between Sarge Hubbard Park and the playground. Um, Riverside Recreation Area, Sarge Hubbard Park, multi-use park and recreation grounds, reclamation of former city landfill. West side of river, just south of Terrace Heights Drive, about 28 acres. City-owned land managed by Yakima Greenway Foundation, developed in two phases, uh, dedicated in 1987 and 1990, uh, requires high level of maintenance, bus service from downtown to park, used as site for Greenway fun and fundraising events, including Winter Walk, Eagle Earth Day, Gap to Gap Relay, Concert Series, A Case of the Blues, Great Yakima Duck Race Festival. Because of the popularity of the events, the Greenway Facility's additional parking is desperately needed. One possibly is city-owned land occupied by Superior Asphalt until the winter of 1995-1996. You think with all those sponsors, cameras would work? Well, city-owned land but managed by Yakima Greenway Foundation. So what that's telling me is, is that land is owned by, is owned by uh, the city and the park is maintained by Yakima Greenway Foundation. But the overall justification of stuff that happens at that park, um, I, I believe that all goes back to the city. That's what I would take from it. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're getting into it today. Uh, let me get back to my screen here so I can see you guys. Uh, the city owns the land, but the Yakima Greenway has leased it from them. It's like a 99-year lease. Sadly, not enough are getting involved in city meetings if they even have them. Well, Look what I found. 
Yakima Greenway Foundation, non for profit. Uh, Washington for profit corporation, address 111 South 18th Street, which is uh, Sarge Hubbard Park's address. Uh, director slash officers, uh, Evan Anderson, governor. Uh, Kelly is agent. Steve Wilms is governor. Registry page, SOS. All right, annual report. Oh, I might not be able to open it. Hold on one second. I'm already signed in. Hold on here. All right. So I'm signed in. Try this again. <laughs> All right, since it won't do the one from the 26th of July, uh, delinquent annual report notice, annual report due date notice. Uh, It's fine. We'll just go back to uh, this one. Let's take a look here. Hmm. Interesting. Here, I'll show you what it's doing here. Uh, change of status to de de delinquent to active. Uh, derived from a difference of company snapshot 0724 to 0727. But what we'll do is go back here, annual report. When I click to open it, technical difficulties. So I might have to show this to you another day. Yeah, it's doing it on all of them. Shucks. Anyways, uh, the link provides active status of Greenway Foundation, the ancient name, name and officers. You will see a box on the right screen showing what updates had been changed. For example, uh, are removed as governor's effective 9-4-2022. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it does show. Uh, shows an update. Update as of 9 4 2022, removal of Phil Hodge, governor, uh, removal of Officer Ellen Jackson, governor. Hmm. 
So they were removed. Interesting. Interesting. Let's see what else we got here. Um, I got some more stuff for you. Sit tight just for a second. Um, Okay, I am going to check one other thing that I was told to check. We're going into, and I'm doing this live for a reason. Um, just bear with me here. Um. Article from dated September 24, Yakima residents voice concerns about public safety related to gangs, drugs, and traffic. Yakima's location combined with the lack of adequate resources, adequate resources for law enforcement make it attractive. Uh, hmm. Yakima City Council Member Matt Brown discusses traffic and safety at the Community Forum at the Harmon Center on Thursday, September 22nd in Yakima, Washington. Not a lot of people there. I have to go get my granddaughter at school. I will be watch replay. Have a good day. Bye, Karen. Nana of six. Hello. Uh, Sorry, you gotta create a free account here real quick. Oh, that's all that they wanted. If you guys don't know why I cover this case, this is a missing four-year-old um, Lucian missing at Sarge Hubbard Park on September 10th, 2022. And he, here we go.
All right. So Yakima's location, uh, combined with the lack of adequate resources for law enforcement, make it attractive to drug cartels, police said Thursday at the public forum. For residents who also raised questions on a city on a wide range of city issues, including crime, traffic, safety, and road repairs. What is so attractive about Yakima that these cartels, because we are not talking gangs at this point, we're talking cartels. Why are they coming to Yakima? One resident asked, why us? Uh, has to do with the city's central and rural locations in Washington, our main routes of transportation, a lot of drugs that are coming in illegally. Uh, they start here and they go other places from here. He also said it's easier to move um, stuff to rural areas because of lack of law enforcement and resources. So uh, this is an interesting article that was written. Uh, I do have some other articles that are very interesting. I don't want to get into them. Uh, they were from a different area. Um, but I do want to go. I got some new maps. I got some uh, new locations. Uh, uh, bear with me one second. I wanted to bring up those two things real quick. And then I wanted to go. I got to log into my Facebook real quick. I got some. Uh, it's one thing that's not cool to do when it comes to any missing persons case. Is to do something like this. So you take you take and you Photoshop out somebody's face and you put it into uh, other pictures and then do memes on it. That's not cool. And uh, you're blocked from my Facebook, by the way. I blocked you for that reason. Here you go one more time on the hatred Facebook. Uh, Lu Lucian, what happened? I'm the fastest diaper changer. And he took out his head and he cropped it in for the dad. That's not cool. Uh, I know that they're doing trash pickup. I do know it's Lucian's birthday tomorrow. Here's Lucian. He loved sea animals. Um, he went missing on September 10th at Sarge Shepherd Park. I do have a playlist that is in my um, in my playlist section of Lucian stuff. I highly suggest if you're new to this case that uh, that you should uh, go there to catch up as uh, we're still getting into some other things. Um so I went to Walmart this morning and I saw that I missed two very important cameras. This camera is on the northeast corner of Walmart's by the employee's smoking area. I stood below the camera and took a picture in the, in the direction that the camera faces. It is only about 10 feet off of the ground. Hold on. One second, hold up. So it's this camera right here. There's another one over there. That one I believe is a 360 camera. And then this one here. Um, this is the angle here of what it shows, you can see the park in the background. I don't know how far, like this is her taking a picture from here. I'd imagine anybody that came in and out of Walmart, it could catch her, capture the license plates there. Uh, hashtag cancel, yeah, that's correct. Um, Here's 
Here's another one. And then I got one more. So there's another one. It's only a couple of feet off. The, it's to watch out for the carts there. And then here's another one here. There's the park there. There's some cameras up top there. So obviously there's cameras there. There's a camera around the corner there too. And then there's one right there as well. So those are some pretty good uh, cameras. Uh, I did see an update. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to pull it up here. Uh, All right, most of the 40 kids uh, in Yakima County are runaways, but still missing. Case four year old Yakima boy missing for more than three weeks on uh, an outlier for missing kid, missing child experts, say. Uh, posted October 3rd. Uh, thank you, Emily, for posting this. Uh, we'll get into it. I'll play it here. We'll full screen on it. Give me a second to mute out here. And anybody that's local that wants to come up and speak about these things, I have the link there for you. I just want to... So go over here and mute out while I can. Uh, my mouse is giving me problems right now. Still. Still no sign of four-year-old Lucian. More than three weeks, and there's still no sign of four-year-old Lucian Mungia, who vanished from Sarge Hubbard Park in Yakima, leaving the family heartbroken and a community worried about their own children. Cap KBU's Emily Goodell spoke first at the National Center for Missing and exploited children and Washington State Patrol's missing persons unit who say that cases like Lucian's are not the norm comes to the kids. Washington State Patrol, they're aware
There of 93 misperson cases in Yakima County, half involving kids under 18. Of those three, nine juveniles who are missing in Yakima County, I, I, you're safe to always say that 90% of those are, are runaway, that they're a runaway. That doesn't make them any less missing, and it doesn't make them any less a juvenile. But cases where young children have vanished without a trace, like missing four-year-old Lucian Munguia, are extremely rare. It is very, very safe to say that that is less than less than 5%. But it can still happen, even to kids with the most vigilant parents. To reduce the the risk, talk to young kids about stranger danger, older kids about social media safety, and make sure your kids know they can trust you. Provide them guide. And help them through it versus basically scold them for being somewhere where they shouldn't. The second year. don't see your kid call 911 i was a doctor and i'm a call taker for 17 years and i can honestly tell you that you are not burdening anybody by calling 911 if your child is missing uh, no always call and if the unthinkable happens and your child goes missing and stays that way don't give up hope keep their name and their photo out there whether it's a case that just in we're talking in a recovery within a couple hours or a case where the child's been missing 25 years it's nothing stronger and helping safer than making the public aware in yagama county emily goodell cap gave you local news so i wanted to show you that that uh, came out yesterday um there's always hope yeah i did pin the link elizabeth if you want to come up I pinned it to the top there. Um, let's see here. Washington State Bowl listed 49 juveniles. Um, I was told that he is still not on the governor's or the state of Washington's missing person thing. Experts at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and the Washington State Patrol Missing Persons Unit said case, cases like Lucian are definitely not the rule, but the expectation, but the expectation cases where there's no information about an abduction, you know, no suspect information, nothing, Gordon said. It is very safe to say that that, that is less than 5%. All right, uh, I'm gonna bring you up. Okay. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. There you are. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can Cutting hear you. Can you... Oh, am I? Yeah, just wait one second. I will. Uh... I'm clearing up some bandwidth for you. Okay. There, is that better? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me better? I can hear you just perfectly fine. I'm going to go off camera to say bandwidth. Okay. There we go. Um, that city council meeting thing that they had, or it's not a council meeting. It was uh, the thing at, uh, I don't know what that was, a, uh, town hall. Did you see that yeah. at the beginning of my life? Last yeah, month? it was. Yeah, I, I've seen parts of it. I haven't seen it all, but I, I've seen parts. It? Do they videotape it? Yeah, I think they stream it on one in a local channel that we have. That's like a, um, I think they have a channel that they they live stream it on. Uh, just one second. Hey, Natasha McMillan, I will text you today. I know you've been going through a lot. And I know that you just have a new uh, grandbaby, I believe. And uh, I will text you today. Sorry. Go ahead. That's no, okay. 
I was just saying that I think it's live streamed and then also you can pick, you can um, find it on YouTube. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that'd be important to get a feel for what we're dealing with over there in Yakima by uh, displaying that as well. Um, I haven't gone out and searched for it, but uh, I see there is a problem there and I have a very good uh, researcher that's been uh, sending me information on a bunch of uh, different things going on over there. And uh, this is a little boy's birthday tomorrow. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I think, what? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you go first. You know, I think that it kind of surprises people that we have such a problem because when you think about problems and stuff, you're uh, with homelessness and the crime and stuff. A lot of people think of the big cities, especially in the West, San Francisco, LA, Seattle, Portland, um, and don't really think that it's happening, you know, farther in inland as much, but we have a big problem here. It's huge. That's one big reason why my son left. He's like, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to put my kids at risk. And so they left and moved away and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's a bit much bigger than people realize. Yeah, I see that. I see it even made uh, Mexico's uh, newspaper. Oh, yeah. And we have a lot of trafficking here, um, not just in drugs, but uh, human trafficking. It's, yeah. it's, it's a lot. And it's kind of, we're in central Washington. So if you look at the whole Washington map, we're almost smack dab in the middle. So we're like a hub. Um, a lot of the drugs and stuff come here and then they can distribute them out in every single direction. And so we're like, you know, we, we're kind of the hub of Washington state. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that when I was looking at the map. Yeah, it's, it's and by uh, reading the articles. I won't post the articles here, but uh, we can uh, definitely, if somebody wants the articles, I can definitely send them to you. They just have to reach out to me on social media and I'd be willing to, to send them to you. Okay. Well, I did have some information. I went to the park yesterday and really the, um, there wasn't hardly anybody there and, and the family wasn't there. So, cause I didn't want to be disrespectful or anything. And I just kind of walked around the park and tried to get a feel for, um, you know, how Lucian could have got past people without anybody seeing. And I, and I did realize it's actually possible there at the park for that to happen. Okay, you, you want me to go to the map? Um, sure. I think that's a great idea. Uh, hold on here. Let me pull up another. Uh, was there a lot of people at the park? Yesterday or the day that he was there, that he went missing? Uh, yesterday. Was there a lot of people there? No, there probably wasn't more than 10 people at the park. People were there with their kids playing on the toys. And there was a couple of homeless people laying down and sleeping over by the pavilion and stuff. I did get your map. Okay. And uh, I, d uh, I didn't want to display it quite yet. but Hopefully it makes sense to you. It does. I get it. Uh now, I kind yeah, of I looked at it. I don't know if you watched yesterday's live, but I kind of uh, went down the path of what we had written mm -hmm. a little bit to how far the green went. But uh, I, I had my house good. circled and you didn't want to. I know. <laughs> put it and then you it. Yeah. <laughs> I redid it for you. Uh, let me just go here to uh, layers here. It's easier to see this way. Okay. Uh, Yes, tomorrow is Lucian's birthday. And uh, I will be doing something here for his birthday. Uh, we'll do a little uh, happy birthday, uh, some birthday music. And then uh, I have some uh, some pictures and stuff that uh, I'm going to ask his mother today if uh, she's okay with showing them. And I know that some are precious and dear to her. So uh, I just want to make sure that the ones that I show are okay to be shown.
Okay. Um, all right. So if you so, so if you zoom if you zoom into where the parking lot is, okay. Okay. So we have the toys where it has the brown spot, or where it's brown, and then the toys are yep. in there, right? And so then you have the bathroom, which is next yep. to it, and then the pavilion yep. is down to the south. If you are in that pavilion, and I took um, like panoramic, panoramic, uh, can't even say it, pictures like every five feet or whatever to kind of get an idea. Um, of what's going on if you're in that pavilion you cannot see that parking lot there's a hill there and they're all those trees are blocking that so it actually goes up on a hill a little bit and then all that stuff is blocking and you cannot see the pathway farthest to the uh, the parking lot or the path or where the um roundabout is or yep. going to the path down you can't see that from the pavilion you can't you so if you're standing here you can see the pavilion like you can see uh, this building you could probably you could probably see the roof maybe but you can't really see the pavilion pavilion but if you're standing in the pavilion you cannot see that upper parking lot or that upper path okay hold on here one second i shut my uh phone off a little So if you're standing inside the pavilion, you can't see this upper path right here, right? Nope. You can't see if you're anywhere around that pavilion because I stood inside. I stood out a little bit. I took pictures of what I could see and what I couldn't see. And when you take pictures, um, eastern, I guess it would be northeastern, you cannot see that path and you cannot see any any of the parking lot. Wow. But can you, can you, did you see the cameras on the building? Okay, so I saw the cam there. I saw the cameras that are on the, the, you know, where the roundabout is. There's a little like building, and that has a train in it. Yeah. There's Which three cameras. This. Right yeah, there. Yes. Yep. Okay, so if you're if you say I'm looking on it straight, and and we have, I guess that would be the west south corner. Mm -hmm. One camera. There's three cameras on it. There's two larger ones and then a little one. Mm -hmm. So one camera sees there's like a memorial there is for it might be. I'm not sure who it is, but I think it's it's like people who who were in the service that have died that lived in. Yeah, is, so there's a marmal there, yeah, sure which is actually south. So there's. OK, so that so is where know, the this, cameras are. This is where the ca uh, the cameras are here, right? Yes, and there's three of them. Three of them. Mm hmm So if you pan... A little memorial's yeah. right here. Right. So the first camera faces towards that memorial. Oh, yeah. You can't even see the... See, the pavilion's right there. But this picture, I don't know how old this picture is. There's a bunch of trees and stuff there that are not like cut to where you can see and that first camera you can see that memorial but you can't really see anything else because it's just nothing but trees back there behind it hmm yeah this is well uh image captured july 2012. yeah so there's trees up all behind that uh memorial that blocks off everything else you can't see anything so they put trees but yeah, behind the These memorial and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. And then the second camera faces um, more by, like right here, go back a little bit. And I stood right under the camera so I can see where they face. So it faces more this way, but again, it's there's trees everywhere and they're they're much bigger than here. So you can't really see anything with that camera. You can't really see the park. All you can see is this little strip, you know, here, because you can't really see the park or anything because all the trees are, are grown there. Yeah, you got 10 years of growth of all this stuff that's here. Yes. Hmm. So if you pan, and then if you pan more to the to the right, stop right there. That's what you see from the third camera. Hmm. Go back a little bit. Just a little bit more. This right here is what you see from the third camera. 
So if they caught him on video, that makes sense because that's Eastern and South. Yeah. Um, I just wonder if, uh, these cameras got to be owned by the city, right? I don't think that's clear to anybody. I don't think anybody really knows. That's just like a, a whole question that everybody's asking, saying who owns the cameras, you know, who's responsible for all of that. I'm assuming well, it should be the city since it's actually owned by the city and then just the foundation like runs the park or something. Hmm. They're owned by the Greenway Foundation. Shelly G, I don't know who Shelly G is, but uh, the Greenway, so supposedly the Greenway Foundation rents out the park for 99 years. Oh, they've got a lease on it? Yeah, that's what I've found out so far. Okay. Uh, they have a lot of sponsors and stuff. There is a letter that I did receive where they were updating security. Mm -hmm. um, if I can hold on here, I'll go through my emails here real quick and uh, find that one and send it and I can open it up here. Yeah, I wanted to go and just get a first hand where those cameras were and what direction that they were they were facing. I just have to forward this to my other email. Yeah, give me one second and then I'll have this e email. Okay. Well, they're doing construction there right now. This building over here is under construction, right? They have a fence around it? Um, I think, I'm not positive, but I think there's a radio station going over here somewhere. They're moving and putting a new building up. So that might, it might be set to be demolished. I'm not sure. Okay. Looking ahead, I anticipate 2022 to be equally as busy with the construction of the new Greenway Visitor Center and the addition of security improvements to our parking lots. We are also super excited to announce the return of several of our community, including the Kids Fish uh, in on April 16th in the annual Gap to Gap Relay on June 4th. We really could not do this with without you. Um, security improvements to our parking lots they got to be talking about those cameras i think it's lighting i think they're oh, talking about lighting, lighting. Wow. because i saw on a an article where they had made a what whoever who's the the spokesperson made a quote that they were work, that they um are raising money for lighting but the cam but new cameras or additional cameras is not um in their plans for now it might change really quick. You know, they may divert some of those funds, but I don't know. This looks like a donation to the donors, a letter to the donors. Well, it says because of the spirit, the spirit of generosity, the Greenway team was able to replace Sarge Hubbard Park Playground and replace the Sarge Picnic Pavilion roof and restrooms. In addition, we were able to add 20 new fit stations. And with the gen generous support of Yakima's Rotary Club, completely rebuild the Rotary Playground. Right, that's farther down, I think, down the Greenway. I think it burnt, someone burnt it down and they replaced it. Mm. And then that's probably why they're doing these cleanups. He also told me, that, oh, here. Well, they, they said that they're doing those cleanups that are happening tomorrow because um, there are four, I believe they said four homeless encampments that are completely abandoned and All they right. want to get those areas cleaned up. I have spoken with Ken Wilkinson, the Yakima Parks Manager. He told me the Greenway leased the land and they have their own employees. 
Uh, he also told me they have their own office or building there, and it is, and it is manned. So here is my other question that I have. So you probably weren't here earlier when I called the Greenway Foundation. No, um, I just popped up or just when you saw me, I popped up. I was doing something so, else. So I called this number, the phone number at 509-453-8280. Mm-hmm. They allow people to do community service there. Um, and it says that you need to show up at the maintenance building at 7 a.m. or at noon. So I wonder how long if you show up there at noon, uh, eight o'clock would be eight hours, right? Or would they, uh, does anyone know if the encampments and stuff have all been checked good as well? We don't know. No. We do know that there was some problems with with um, some homeless um, people throwing rocks and stuff like that. But I, we really don't know if it was all checked very well. Yeah. Well, well, I'm assuming with volunteer time, I mean, you know, most volunteers are people who don't work, right? I mean, some people volunteer maybe on weekends or or you get some kids who have to volunteer or there's a lot of elderly people volunteer. I would think they're probably in four-hour shifts. Well, I think they're probably 8 to 12 and then 12 to 4 or something. So I, have, I have a different thought on this. So my thought is, is that you go over and you get a misdemeanor over there. And uh, they assign you to uh, probation and community service. And you have to fill your community service times. And uh, the Yakima Greenway is one place that you can fill that at. Yes, because probably a felony you could not. Because uh, well, for depends, certain felonies uh, anyway. Yeah. Right. Depends on the felony. Certain felonies you could not because you can't be. Some people can't be around children. But um you know, yes, probably, but there's also a lot of um, the schools around here also require the kids to do so much uh, community service. I know some of them, I don't know if they all do. And um, there's a lot of church organizations that do community service and, um, and a lot of people who are like me, um, who only work, you know, uh, part time or don't work at all will do community service because I volunteer my time, but at, at different things than this. Yeah. So can I ask you a question and you don't have to answer it. Has your whole mentality and idea of what's happened here completely changed? Well, I'm getting there. I, I, I think um, it sure made me think about it a lot. I'm really thinking about a lot because sitting there looking at, you know, that he could have disappeared without anybody seeing him. And then I haven't made any comments about the, the um, playground area yet, but I literally went to every parking spot. I was really careful not to get anybody in my pictures, every parking spot that faced the playground area and took a picture of the playground area. And right. I did this for like, I think there was 12 or 14 of them. And I noticed that um, when the kids are on, and if you, uh, you can look at it sometime when the kids are actually on the playground equipment playing and stuff, it is kind of square or rectangle or something. And so when they're in there, you can't see them. Because they're in there playing and they're maybe on, you know, getting ready to go on a slide or getting ready to do something else. And while they're inside that playground equipment, there's times you can't even see the kids there. You can't, you don't know if, if your kid's there or not, if you're not paying attention. And so I kind of went, wow, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, and all it takes is a second. Right. And if you saw them going into the play, say you saw them going on the playground equipment and you knew they were playing there and you turned your, your back for a minute or two and turned back, if you don't see them, I think immediately you would just assume that they're in there playing. You yeah. just can't see them. Yeah. And I've spoken to Sandra a couple times. Um, obviously, uh, they're in uh, 
getting ready for his birthday party tomorrow and uh, still looking for him. And she still has two other kids that she has to care for and dealing with all this other stuff and going to the police station and following up on everything. And um, it's just pretty heartbroken right now. So we uh, definitely need to be kind as she wasn't even there. Um, that's the worst part of it. It'd be a different story if they were both there. Because this would have never happened, but there was only one person there. And it's not his fault either. I mean, all it takes, like, you were there yesterday, and all it took is one second for you just to turn for a second, and he'd be gone, and you wouldn't be able to find him. Right, right. There was a lady actually sitting in her car watching her girls play, and I thought, oh, my gosh, do you not know what just happened? I think what that what really made me start thinking um, – about how this could possibly have happened, you know, because at first I was like, how can this possibly happen? There's a lot of people at the playground, you know, they should have been able to see him and stuff. But when I got to that, that pavilion and started pay taking pictures and really just paying attention to what I was seeing, I thought, this is totally possible. This could have happened exactly like that. So there's, there's no way, like, where's the path at here? The path is over here on the other side of this pole. Okay, so if you, okay, pan towards your right. See, there's a hill there. Okay, so if you pan, I'm going to show you kind of, okay, that's the corner of where the train is. It's kind of hard because when you take pictures, for some reason, yeah. the ele you know, the elevation doesn't show well. I was taking pictures of the hill that they rolled down and it just looks like this tiny little hill when it's actually pretty tall. And so you go up a hill a little bit and then it's quite a ways down before the path is there. The second path, because there's a path right on the um, right hand side of, of that building. There's a path yeah. that goes. And then it meets up with some other paths. I mean, they have, you know, four or five paths that kind of all meet up. But the main path, the Greenway path that goes from Natchez all the way to Union Gap is up a little hill and then down quite a ways for another hill. So would you say it's on the other side of these trees or it's on this no, side? No, it's on this trees. side of the trees. Yeah, this just looks okay. like the trees are closer than what they are. The trees aren't as close as what, what they look. So that's quite a long hill going down to where the path is. Yeah. If you see where the roundabout is and then you go down to where the path is, it's it's actually quite a steep hill going down there. I don't remember how, I wish I knew how to use this better because there's a way that I can change the, the actual time. So this was taken in 2020. This is taken in 2022. Okay. Um, as you can tell, the new roofs on the buildings. Oh, sure. And that other building that was here is gone. Actually, it is not. It's it's farther up. It's the one that's farther up a little bit. Well, it's maybe. This. I'm not. This is the one that has the, um, the fence all around it and stuff. But there may have been a building there. I, I don't remember. It's been years since I've been since I had been there before this. So there may have been a building there. And then there was a, this building has a oh, fence going all the way around it. Wow. That's not very far at all. Mm -mm. And that's and right it, by the, here's the park. Even if they're parked right here, I think they're parked right here someplace. Well, they said directly facing the park. And so I would think probably the, you know, about six three or five, four or five, six more up if they yeah. were part. And I, like I said, I took pictures from every parking in front of every parking spot and every picture shows that it is possible for those kids to be in there and then you couldn't see them. Well, and if you thought that he went this way when he really didn't. Yeah. What actually, if he took that right? What if he took that one right this there? Way. Like right. he could have snuck through right here. Mm-hmm. Or just gone up the hill. I mean, there's nothing stopping him from going up the hill and then down to the path. Yeah. 
because there's no, you know, there's no fencing or anything there at all. You can just walk right over and go down. And what's really scary, if you stop, um, go up a little bit, like go, uh, uh, let me see the northern part just a little bit when it, it reaches the, um, yeah scroll, yeah, scroll where I can see the northern part and there's um, Terrace Heights Boulevard. Terrace uh, Heights Boulevard. There. Okay, stop right there. Right next to Terrace Heights Boulevard, it goes down on a hill and there are homeless mm -hmm. people living all underneath that bridge and by that bridge and stuff. There's They're tents right down here. there. There's Yeah, there's tents down there. There's um, just garbage down there. It's there's a lot of people right there. I just, I noticed that yesterday. I wasn't really paying attention, but yesterday I wanted to get a really lay of the land. And I'm like, wow, here are these people. And they're just right next to the, the main road going into Terrace Heights. And, you know, they've got tents and all kinds of stuff there. Did you go out to the river yesterday or no? No, I, um, I didn't. Uh, I think how criminals, I know how criminals think. I know how people who are homeless think. And I know what it is like to be missing and to look for a missing loved one. This is so heartbreaking. Yeah. And uh, Natasha, you're going to have to go back and watch some of my old videos. I know you've been gone for a little while because you have a new addition to the family there. But uh yeah, there's a, a lot you missed. Um, and I think uh, in due time, uh, no, they were are remodeling it. They have a fence around it. Yeah, I saw that, Shirley. But uh, for some reason on this map, see, I don't know how this works. So that building is still there, but on this map, it doesn't show that building. Oh, I'm wrong. Maybe that's it right there. Right. And it's it's um, in pretty bad shape, but they did clear that building. They searched it, of course. That would have been probably one of the first places that I. That might be where they're going to do the visitor center. I'm not sure. Yeah, because this is the one that they have the fence all the way around. Right yes. Now. Yes. And it's in pretty bad shape. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing. So this path is here, and that's not very far. You see the the. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, not far it's, at all. no, it's very. It's what hundred yards, maybe. I mean, let's say you're sitting here, park. Boom. Let's say that there's other cars parked here. A little guy who sneaks. He could have snuck right right past, and boom. Yeah, in between cars, easily. And there is a hill there. That's the hill you're talking yes. about. Yes. And that path goes right along those trees there. So it's not that far. I thought that that was like further away. And this hill might stretch out further now. It does. It To the south, it stretches out pretty far. And then I think it gets closer to, to level ground as you go north. But from the parking lot here, you can't see the pavilion back there. Nope. And the pavilion can't see you. But the pavilion, if you're at the pavilion, I'm sure you can see this park. Uh, you can see it. Gosh, I have to think. Yes, you can see it. And you can see the rest of the park, but you can't see this upper part. Hmm. And let's see if you look at this. This, if you're not looking super, super close at those toys or uh, yeah. and stuff, e easily kids can just disappear in there, well, and you have to really look for them to see if they're there or not, because well, there's just a lot like, going on. It doesn't look like this anymore either, right? No, I think it. That is, I think that's the. Let's see. Is, is are, the are we back in the? Yeah, that must be. It's been remodeled since then, I guess. Yeah, because I the other one burned, I guess. No, that's the one that was farther north. Oh, that's burnt. the one that's further down? Yeah, that one burned and was rebuilt. Uh, one day while I was at the park, I seen guys going in and out. They are working 
inside of that greenhouse, maybe that's what their new visitor center is going to be. Yeah, I bet it is. Uh, I think mom said the dad was parked right in front of the playground, like right in front of it. I parked there. You can see the hills at all from that point. You can't see the hills at all from that point. No, what I think maybe I, I'm not gonna, I'm just going to make a guess here. Once you get past the uh, playground, then there's that hill that they roll down. And like I said, it's so hard on pictures to see where the elevation changes, but it is pretty tall. I would think a five foot person, you wouldn't be able to see them if they were at the bottom of that hill. I was going to take someone with me, but no one wanted to go with me because I wanted to stand at the bottom of the hill to see if I could see them and how much I could see. Sorry, I'm over here talking on mute. Um, this over here, you can't see down that hill, I don't think. Like if no. you're parked in this, in this parking space. No. Let me just move. Uh, I think it would have to be quite a bit out towards the other road before you would be able to see people. Because that hill is pretty sh is a pretty sharp decline yeah. there. I mean, you can see it right here, kind of how it how it goes. Let's see if we can go. I never tried this. And what's this building? That building is it's a um, it's like an organization for app the Apple industry. I can't remember okay. the name of it, but they do a lot of stuff with that with the apple and industry and stuff help sell fruit yeah because you can turn around from there and see it oh nice i can go in the parking lot that's the bottom parking lot yeah Yeah, see that hill there? Yeah. And as you go to the left, it gets, you know, it starts declining. It's and in the, yeah. yeah. It gets it's pretty steep until it starts just kind of going off. And so if they were changing and he came down on this side of the hill and took off around this way, he would never saw him. You would have never saw him, especially if he would have went this way where all the people were. Yes. And these trees now the people in the pavilion should have seen him go, but you know maybe. But if there's a lot of people, who's to know if that kid belongs to somebody he's by? Nobody, yeah. you know. Well, this is a good look at the lake here too. Yeah, that is. So if you're up on here, you could probably see the lake from there. Um, parts of it. I think the farther end, maybe. Okay. But if the you go up to the pavilion, yeah. where you see the red car in the distance, you can see the hills. Oh yeah. So there's a lot of rolling hills and stuff. It's not flat ground at all. So it would be really easy to lose somebody, um, an adult or child, if you were, you know, uh, looking for them um, because of all the ro rolling hills and there's so many different pathways leaving Sarge Hubbard Park, meeting up with the Greenway. Been in car? Is that car still there? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I think all these trees are gone now, and that's like another parking lot. Oh, you know what? I think you're right because um, that area is where the people in the RVs and stuff are parking is in this area. Yeah, but they have it roped off now, right? I don't know. That I didn't pay attention to. I did go to Walmart and look at the 
the cameras that were on, I guess it would be the, the northeast corner. And to me, they don't appear as if they, they um, point to the park at all. It, it looks like it's more than just to the two parking lots there. It looks like the main parking lot and then that other parking lot, that's where it looks like those two cameras are pointing. Yeah. Yeah, because they took down all these trees that were in here. They planted some new ones, I think. But I don't even know if those are there now. It might be completely wiped out. I thought it was just gravel or something, but yeah. I don't really pay that much attention. Hmm. I was too concerned. I was just going over to Walmart and seeing... those cameras were pointing not towards the park. I don't think they're pointed towards the park at all. And I found out there's no cameras over here. Oh, okay. Oh, Which no. seems kind of odd since they would have a bunch of, you think they'd have a bunch of equipment and stuff in there. That just seems kind of I odd. Know. Seems really odd. I mean, it seems like everybody has cameras, even the cheap ones. We do, you know, almost everybody has the door cameras and, and cameras and stuff because you can get them so inexpensive now. You don't have to have something super expensive. Yeah. Wow. And then you see here, if you, if you keep moving the direction you were moving, mm -hmm. there's there's like the cutoffs that go down and then the rivers see it meets right up. I think that's before even Buchanan Lake, the river meets right up to that side of the a pathway. This is all solid trees though, right? Or you haven't been down that far. I don't think it is. I, um, I know the solid, there are solid trees um, here North, North of this picture that, that is actually more trees than, it looks like it's more trees from the ground than it looks like here, but I don't think there's solid trees going, going south. And then they turn it, you know, then see right there, it meets right up with the river. The river's right there. Yeah. And going north, going north, it follows pretty much the river and the river's right there a lot of the way. And a lot of ponds, lots of little ponds and big ponds going north on the Greenway. Oh, yeah, three cameras for 20 bucks each. I have now no, in addition to the known wildlife in the area, we also have bears and the fox cameras are good safety all the way around. Yeah, I mean, it just, the Greenway stops here, though, right? At uh, at uh, Bulls or uh, Union Gap? Going south, it stops at Union Gap. But going north, it goes north about 20 miles. Okay. And the interstate pretty much runs that, right along there. Yeah, right. And it goes right through the gap, which we call the Union Gap, because it's the foothills. Some people might not think they're foothills, but that's what we call them. And then north, it goes into Sela, and, th and there's another gap that goes into Sela that's foothills on either side. I mean, they were using heat-seeking drones. If the kid was out there, they would have found them. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, there could have there could have been a situation um, where he could have fallen in the water and went down the river. And then they wouldn't have seen him. But the river was really pretty uh, shallow at that point. So I'm not sure that that would even be the case. Yeah. Hmm. Strange. Definitely strange. Uh, yeah. I'm sending you an email of the Yakima Greenway Foundation of prof Profit Profile. Yes, Natasha.
But that's a uh, little. Else? Yeah, no, I was just saying that little bit of information that that I was able to get yesterday. I think helps a lot for me. I yeah. don't know if it helps a lot for you, but it helps a lot for me understanding. Well, yeah, and when you get time, send them over to me, and I can show them. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it tomorrow on his birthday, but the, maybe on Thursday I, I can show the pictures. Okay, sounds good. You can email, well, whatever way is easier for you. Okay. Whether email or messenger or however you want to do it. Okay, sounds good. Um. Yeah, I don't know. And then uh, I did see this and people have done really good driving here so that we understand the area i mean i, I just i mean there's just i just wonder how far that camera captures because it would have seen him going this way though no that camera with that i told you that i could see were like the little parking lot and stuff yeah um I don't think so because it's lower than the other cameras and it's facing kind of towards the parking lot bathroom area. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it's just not like facing one, you know, the purpose of it is just to face towards the bathroom area, make sure there's no, you know, th yeah. anything going on there or catching things. I don't think it would go farther up to be able to see that. That's just my opinion. I don't know if it has a, you know, it was a very, it was a small camera. I don't know if that makes any difference. But I stood right underneath that camera and took a picture of what I saw from there. So I'll send you that. Look at the program area. Okay, there are two differences in the amounts. Hmm. Uh, I'm sending you an email. Greenway Foundation out for profit profile. Hold on here one second while we're live. Okay. Because that's what I wanted to see is their financials. They're not for profit, so they have to display their financials. Yeah, they do. And and I I have um, uh, a lot of experience in the not for profit. For profit, I do. That's what I volunteer my time is some not for profit organizations. So yeah, I mean they have a lot of sponsors and a lot of good going on. It's just I guess with this happening, you would think that they'd be focusing on putting more cameras up. I still don't know what to think about the found child separate incident that's mentioned in the scanner dispatch audio from seven forty eight to eight fifteen, around twenty six minute mark, uh, found in produce department at walmart hmm. it could be unrelated no I, okay. it was it was a separate incident but but that's just strange i wonder if it was that same if it was the walmart right on chestnut or if it was the walnut over on, on 64th because there's two different walmarts in yakima yeah i it's on the one dispatch recording that says 748 to 815 okay. that I think I uh, uploaded. Uh, no, this is the one. Hold on here. Breaking the 77s. I have seen updating on lighting in the other parks in Yakima, but if they have cameras at the other parks, I have not noticed. I don't think they do. Which uh, is which is a shame which is actually really a shame when my kids were younger we have a, car, a park here and everybody who's from yakima know exactly what i'm talking about it's called randall park and my um uh, daycare provider my babysitter she took the kids to the park one day and there was a guy sitting there taking pictures of my kids and she uh, she said, I just got up and took off with the kids. And she says, once I got in the car, then I called the police. And the police said they'd go take, you know, uh, check it out. But then he, that person wasn't there when the police got there. There should be cameras in every single park. Our yeah. kids, our kids are the most important thing that we have here. We need to protect them and why, you know, what they have, they have to have funding for 
cameras in the park. If not, then let us know. Let you know, and maybe we can raise the funds for that. <clears throat> well, you saw all the sponsors they have. Right. Go to the sponsors and tell them exactly what happened. You know, right. now's the time for them to raise the funds to get some security cameras. I mm -hmm. think the most the I mean, was it cost 20, 30 bucks, maybe 50 bucks for the cloud storage per month? 50 bucks. Right. If and that per month. The, yeah. The, yeah. And just but put the them out to your sponsors and tell them what that you need money for it. And right. they'll they should have uh, 100%, in my opinion, they should have cameras going up and down that greenway as well. And they can get uh, a solar panel with a Wi-Fi uh, camera and set it up out there. And it, it, it wouldn't cost them much at all. And it goes right it goes right into and you pay for a service and they could do it all along that greenway too. That they could would, probably get a grant for that. <clears throat> You know, if they apply for a grant, they could probably get a grant for that. Yeah. I think, I, I think what's, oh, go ahead. No, go. I was just thinking, I think with a lot of nonprofits, um, they uh, raise money for one thing at a time. They don't do like multiple campaigns. They'll just do one campaign. And when that one's over, do another campaign. And legally, um, by law, if, so, if you're a nonprofit and someone contributes, to a certain campaign, that's where the money has to go. You can't di divert that. The only money that can be diverted is if somebody somebody um, gives you money and does not designate what they want it to be for. To just you know say I want it for um, maintenance or whatever, and then you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. And so if they're doing one campaign, they're probably not going to start another campaign until they have enough money to do the one that they're working on right now. Hey, um, hey, Boatwright, I would like to have you on panel one day and do a little thing. Uh, I, I saw your organization. I looked you up after um, after the last live that I saw you were on. And uh, I went to have you on panel and to explain to viewers and stuff what you kind of do. Uh, here's my email. Lots of uh, messenger and stuff is easier for you. I'm. I also have a level-headed group on my Facebook, but email me and then we can. I, I can send you my number and we'll get hooked up to having a, a, a live where on uh, like tomorrow I'm going to have a live where I'm doing uh, uh, making connections with people, and this person's an advocate, and but she's also um, does a whole bunch of other stuff down in Houston, and. Uh, I would love to uh, get you on one of these uh, shows and talk about what you guys do and get some traffic over to you guys' site. Uh, they were searching there. Sadly to say there's thousands of places the child could be hung up in the, in the river downstream, different on the ground than what Google Earth shows. I found a truck below the Wapato Dam a week-ish ago. Yeah, that's it's Wapato, but you did great. Uh, yeah, Wapato. and I know exactly where he's talking about. What a it. potato! What a potato! What a potato! <laughs> it's Wapato. We have we Wapato. have that a, a reservation right close to us, and so a lot of the every a lot of things are are named um, in Native American language and names. So yeah, yeah, I actually did the whole. Uh, there was 180 people missing from the Navajo Nation down in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a, a really good, important thing I did. They actually have somebody that was uh, running or walking from Arizona all the way to Washington, D.C. She's still on her journey. And uh, it's amazing. She's met tons of people. She dedicates the stuff to the missing women and the missing kids and the missing men. And she goes live from Facebook and then does funding and stuff. But she gets like 19,000 people in there um that are watching her on her lives and stuff it's it's pretty amazing you know i have um i've done a little bit of research and and different things about native <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> native american um indigenous people who go missing and the way that they're treated with with such disrespect and and like oh this is not important right now is shameful I, you know, it's just shameful. And 
It makes me very angry. <clears throat> I know my allergies are hitting me right now. <laughs> this is an old photo, the house to the left of those trees are no longer in the dirt parking lot. Uh, and all of those trees are no longer in the dirt parking lot. Oh, maybe this one. This house is oh. no longer here. Oh, okay. And the, the truth, I don't think nothing's in this trees. Or I mean, this parking lot. I think it's just gravel. I think when I yeah, looked at it, it was sure. just gravel. I'm pretty sure the whole thing's gravel and I saw in one of the news clips that they had it completely roped off so like nobody could park there which I think yeah. probably Walmart probably got mad because I think after they unload the semis back here mm -hmm. that they they probably go here park and spend whatever their time is that they have to be down for and then mm -hmm. they take back off afterwards right right so they need because of their log books and stuff they have to have so much time that they have to have downtime and so yeah you i've seen a lot of trucks parked there so i think you're right but a lot i think there was also a lot of people taking advantage of that space and parking their rvs and stuff there and and you know, not just staying a day or two while they were traveling but living on the property oh i think what she's saying the only part roped off right now is to the far right where the pavement goes into paved parking. Oh, the overflow parking lot, right? Yeah. Um, I was reading about missing kids on the tribal land just from this year. And I know nothing about it. 12 and 13 years old. Yeah. Uh, there's only, well, that's the hardest age because they're too old to be endangered because a lot of them get uh, talked about being in runaways. Mm -hmm. And here in, Washington, the, here, in Washington State, here in Washington State, um, once they turn 13, then it gets really difficult as parents to try to keep them home and, and stuff like that. And even though you can get them to get back home, they'll just get up and talk, take off again and and Washington State uh, views them as being pretty much can make their own decisions and can do whatever they want. It's hard to handle something when they don't let the parent, they won't give the parents any information. You know, it's all um, considered confidential between them and the kid and stuff. So it becomes really hard 13 and above to um, kind of deal with, with um, the state when it comes to missing kids or runaways. I took that down for one second. I'm gonna show you something that is worth uh, taking a look at. Um, okay, so it won't play while this is on, that's perfect. Um, so this, that actual, uh, it's, you can't see it very well, but the, see that semi truck yes. right here next to my cursor. So that's yes. a Washington state police do that. Uh, that would be, um, I forget what well, homeward bound is what it's called. And um, a, a little Michael Monkey Bonnet out of Fruitland, Idaho is missing. And uh, they got five trucks through the company to uh, put his picture on there. And they travel across the, the United States plus uh, plus Canada. Um, and that's uh, Washington State Patrol is part of that organization. It's a not-for-profit, though. Uh, it's called the Homeward Bound. And then I don't forget the name of the trucking company, but I'd have to go back and look. Um, but those are all things that could be done, you know. Uh, they do them for um, a trafficked and uh, missing people. So when everybody thinks, oh, trafficked, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that when somebody's moved from one place to another, that's called traffic. 
It doesn't mean that anything's being done to them or anything like that. It's just if they've been taken to one place and then moved to a total separate place, and that's called trafficking. Okay. So is it different if they take them across state state uh, borders, though? Is that considered? No. So let's say, let's say we're here at this park. Let's say somebody took Lucian, for an example. Let's say that this house is still here. So let's say somebody took Lucian from here, took him to this house right here, right? So mm -hmm. that would mean he was abducted. And then let's say that he, from this place right here, let's say that he was moved over to a uh, house over. Well, that would be called considered trafficked because he was moved from that house over there to this house right here with just them trying to get away. Does that make sense? Right. Trying to evade or get so, away. And, well, yeah. it's like when somebody comes in from Canada, for example, and yeah, yeah, uh, Mexico is easier to use as an example. So you have coyotes in Mexico that help you pay them and it helps you come across the border. Well, that would be a coyote would be the trafficker. So he is trafficking you from, from Mexico, as an example, as trying to get you into the USA. So um, that you're paying a trafficker. They call them coyotes. But when they move you from ranch to ranch in order to get across the border, that's called trafficking. Right. And it doesn't really matter for what reason, if it was trafficking to bring you into the United States or, or whatever, or trafficking to move you from the location that's still considered the same thing as trafficking. Is yeah. that a worse, is that a worse? Um, well, I mean, they have human trafficking and then they have like, uh, where they do bad to people and there's that type of trafficking too, but the word trafficking when you look it up, it's moving one person from one location to the next. So when uh, I always say that when I'm talking about the Michael Vaughn case, because if he's been moved from one, obviously uh, he's somewhere out there. And if you've been moved from one place to the next, that's considered trafficking, even if it's with like a good, healthy family. And um, he, he, he's still being trafficked. Uh, but that's one of the criteria is on uh abduction trafficking the missing um i'd have to go back and look at the homer bound program uh stuff that's set up but you catch little clues by that having press conferences and stuff right. uh, just like this one like they haven't come out and said that he's been abducted yet and uh i don't know if they have any evidence of it if they do or if they don't i just don't see the probability and i i understand what his name is in here boat uh I don't want to miss say his name here. Boatwright. Um, Boatwright's in here. And uh, like he says, he, there is places he could be hung up on, in on the river. Um, I don't know. It's been a long time. I, I, unless he's hung up on something in the river. Mm -hmm. But uh, th that river goes a long ways. So I don't know. Oh, how yeah. far is it to the dam? Um, to, I think to the dam that he's talking about, it's through the gap and maybe a mile or two when you're going south through the Union Gap and then a mile or two down if that's the Wapto Dam. I think, I hope that I'm I'm right because I because it's actually in Parker, Washington. Um, so I'm thinking that that's yeah, it's it you're you're in the right track. It's through the gap and then there's a little dam. Yes, yes, but it's very small. It's not like a dam you would see on the Columbia River. Um, it's just a very small, like a diversion dam. I think maybe um, some irrigation comes off of it or something. I'm not sure. That's where my husband went searching for a couple times is at that dam because he felt that if he had fallen in the water, that's where he would he would yeah. get hung up. But, well, you know, we're, we're getting into our seasons where the, the water is going to get, because once it starts getting cold up in the mountains, we're not going to have all the, ru uh, the runoff. And so the river's going to get really low. And so I think at that point, they'll probably be doing some more searching in that river. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, you can see well, when that's you come in. That's problem too with, with the party that was at the park. Mm -hmm. um, this is the problem with the people that were at that party at the park. Uh, yes. Uh, I just looked at the newsletter, right? It says nothing about if you see this child or anything, you would assume it w it should if there is a missing child in the area. Yeah. Yeah. And there's um, probably a million or two acres in the Indian reservation where there could be there, there, you know, there's a million and a half places here. We're pretty rural. I mean, we have Yakma, which is the biggest city. And then the cities that are real close to Yakma will, you know, consider that Yakma. But, you know, the, it becomes very, very rural, especially once you go south of the, the gap. And, and it's kind of a daunting task if you were looking for somebody. Yeah, and pretty much all the towns are along the interstate. Yeah, there's some out that's not along the interstate, but most of them are. We are um, mostly agriculture here. Uh, yeah. Our biggest our biggest crop is apples, and so you know we run on agriculture. Um, that's pretty much what our economy is ran on. So, and you can see by looking at that, we're just like this big valley thing in the middle. Hmm. All right. Anything else? I don't think so. I think I said everything that I wanted to say that I wanted to mention to you. So. Yeah, I got to go pick up groceries. That's why I ask if there's anything else that you. Uh, <laughs> Those are important. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got Walmart pickup, so I don't want them. To oh. Oh, okay. uh, it's called Sunnyside Dam, and it's 4.7 miles from Union Gap. Oh, she jumped off from Union Gap. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth Litton, for coming up here. Uh, and the Sunnyside Dam is nine miles from Sarge Hubbard Park. I'll have to take a look at that. Uh, I am so tempted to call this board or this park and ask them why is there not anything in this newsletter about him. Yeah. Uh, the places he could be are endless. However, I would seriously catch a court case and go check the encampments. I am just saying one of the encampments put up a thousand dollar reward. Uh, just so you know, they're running the time. Um, we're going to show Lucian's face. It is Lucian's birthday tomorrow. I will be doing a little thing for Lucian tomorrow. Um, there'll be a little birthday celebration here. Um, as I, uh, as I did for Monkey as well, which is Michael Vaughn that went missing out of Fruitland. Um, so we'll cover some of that tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday. That'll probably be earlier in the day as uh, I have uh, I have a special guest tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, you should see a live going up at some point today. Um, and also, if you haven't checked out some of my other lives from yesterday, definitely check those out. Um, also, there is a couple newer Lucian videos in my uh, playlist uh, that I did the last couple of days. Uh, you don't want to miss those because this has kind of been a journey going on here uh, with Lucian and coming up with more information and more facts and stuff. Uh, I um, I just uh, definitely... Um, want to make connections with more people and, and helping find some people. And uh, I also cover some other true crime stuff. I did not get to uh, the little boy yesterday. That will be tomorrow. So if you're watching this and you were hoping to see that, uh, I will be covering that little boy in the morning. Uh, hopefully Callie stays awake long enough so we can collaborate on that one together. Um, anything else you guys need? You guys know where to reach me? Um, as I always say, if you see something, say something. Hit the wrong button.